volunteers. If you're looking for fundraising, you know, donations and stuff like that, that's the 20%. But you guys are constantly out in the community helping people. So you don't really need to worry too much about the 20%, quite frankly. Um, some things that I recommend everyone do on Facebook is categorize. Put your friends in groups. And once you do that, it allows you to privatize your account. So if you have um, you know, some drunken college pictures on your Facebook page, you can actually say, well, I only want my college friends that were drunk with me to see those pictures. You can do that. Facebook is that private. Or if I want to post something and I only want Baron here to see it, I can say, I only want Baron to see it. Or if I don't want Tim to see it, but I want everybody else to see it, I can say that. Facebook is that private. So once you do that, then you want to start engaging people. So you want to spend most of your time on Facebook looking at the status updates of others because people are self-centered. They want to be acknowledged. So you have to take those three reasons. Why are people on Facebook? They want to be acknowledged. So you spend most of your time acknowledging other people, and that's how you'll get them to pay attention to the stuff you post about anything, including your chapter. All right, some things you don't want to do on Facebook. You don't want to spam, of course. You don't want to talk about business or your you know, organization all the time in a selling type of way. Um, if you play games, anybody here play games? It's okay. There's, it's okay to admit that. Don't share your games with everybody because not everybody is interested in the games. And don't, don't randomly friend people that you don't know. You want to try to make sure that you've touched them in some way unless you have a prospect list, like these are people that I'm trying to get in front of because they would be great for Kiwanis. Then you friend those people and you send them a message saying, hey, here's why I'm friending you. And don't send your club's page to people like 50 times. Okay, if they said no the first time, they'll probably say no the <coughs> tenth time and they'll probably unfriend you at some point if you overshare that with them. So, um, as far as your organization is concerned, I'm going to talk about some basic principles that apply to business or to your organization, your, your chapter. Um, and one of them is organizational buy-in. And this is something that um, I kind of came up with myself because I'm like a mad scientist and always thinking about how people can get their organization involved. But I'm going to talk about three types of buy-in that are going to allow you to engage your sphere and get them to get involved. First one is team buy-in. So team buy-in means, obviously, the people that are in your direct chapter. So if you've got, um, like, how many people are in your, in your club? About 104. Okay, you've got 104 people in your club. Let's just say that 50% of them have Facebook. We'll just venture, I guess. And if 50% of them have them, they might all, of that 50%, they may all have 100 friends apiece. So those 50 people send out 100 rec or suggestions to your page. You just got, what? 5,000 suggestions. And we're only looking for 10% conversion on that. So we're looking for 500 people out of 5,000 requests. So that's team buying. Very simple concept. So you're going to educate people in your organization. Here's what we're trying to do with Facebook. Please send them to our club. Okay, the next one is friend and family buying. So your friends and family are interested in what you're doing. So you want to get them to get involved in the process by inviting their people or sharing a piece of content that you posted. How much time I got, Tim? Okay, I'm good? Okay. Customer buy-in. So if you help a family, then you want to get them to start talking about what you guys have done for them on Facebook. Because when people are touched by something, first of all, they're emotional. But on top of that, they're also more likely to, to say whatever it is that you did for them in a heartfelt and genuine way. And their friends, as a result, will jump on board with that. Hey, this organization helped my friend. And my friend is asking you to like their page, so I'm going to like it because they helped my friend. Make sense? Okay. Now, industry buy-in goes into co-branding. So this is four types of buy-in, I apologize. But industry buy-in means that you're going to try to work with other types of organizations that are like yours, and you are going to co-share. You're going to talk about their stuff, they're going to talk about your stuff. And that is actually going to cause a web or network of nonprofits 
that's going to make the entire um, industry of charities and nonprofits much stronger. So these are some examples in the world in general where we've seen where a company like Nike, when they partnered with iPod, I think it was like three years ago, that was a really, really powerful combination. It was a great campaign and it still goes on to this day. You can go to any kind of shoe store and you'll see a display of Nike with iPod stuff. So you want to think about other organizations like 4Kids, for instance, that's out there. They are a, they're, they're not a competitor with you. You guys help them. So you co-brand with their organization, get their buy-in, and then it makes it much stronger. So their people come to you, your people go to them. It's a win-win. And then anyone ever heard of Foursquare? Anybody use Foursquare? Okay. Foursquare is a geo-social network. So whenever you have an event, like after this class, I'm going to create an event that's called whatever this, you know, the winter, what's called winter? Okay, so it's going to be called that, and then people can see that I'm checked in there. The power of Foursquare is that when I check in on Foursquare, it updates to my Facebook account and my Twitter account. So they see that I, well, basically, let's see, 3,500 people, many of which are in this area, are now seeing that I'm speaking for the Kiwanis Club. Can I stop? Is it like uh, the geo... Or whatever Facebook, is doing? Is Facebook Places? Yeah. Yes, Facebook Places copied off of Foursquare and failed. In my personal opinion. And the reason so many more people use Foursquare is because Foursquare has badges and points you can earn, but also you can do specials. So that's the thing. If you have an event and you have a sponsor, you can do a special through Foursquare. So there's all kinds of very interesting things you can do with it that can help you engage and get people to want to get involved. Now, how are we going to get more exposure? Any ideas? No ideas, really? No creativity in the corners? You got the ideas. I got the ideas, okay, so we're going to move on. Okay. Use the power of 10. So, if you have 100 friends, you're going to ask your 10 closest friends to share stuff. <laughs> Sorry. All right. And the way that you're going to use the power of 10 is you're going to say, hey, we have this event that's going on, and this is what we're doing. Will you go into the event and select guests to invite, or will you share it on your wall? So now you just went from exposure of, you know, you're 100 or 200 friends to now 100 to 1,000 or 2,000 people overnight. Why not? Incentivize stuff. So you guys probably do sponsorships or you guys do different things, co-branding with businesses. Why not come up with incentives that are going to get people to say, well, what's in it for me? Well, the Kiwanis is giving away a $25 gift card to the Royal Chocolate, so maybe I'll get involved in whatever they're doing just because there's an incentive there. Make sense? Now, I did a special for one of my Facebook classes. I posted a status update that said, Hey, um, I'm doing a test. If you see this post, click like or comment on it, and I'll put you in into a contest. In less than two hours, I got 83 likes and 16 comments. Think about that. 83 different people saw this post and clicked like on it, and 16 other people commented. That's powerful. That's the power of getting the word out to a very large scale of people. So, some of the ways you're going to get people to engage you or incentivize them is to ask them for feedback. So, you know, if you're trying to get in touch with the younger generation, you're going to ask questions like, well, what do you guys want to see us do at our next event? And they might be like, well, they might be an ODU student. Are you guys ODU students or what do you, are you in high school? What do you guys do? We go to CNU. CNU? Okay, and like, what's something cool that your school has done recently? <laughs> snow day. Nothing? Good snow days. <laughs> like, have they had a contest or like a cool concert or a band or something that played or anything like that? No. I think we just got we got the two most boring students at CNU. <laughs> <laughs> they first see if he was going to house the March of Dimes walk. Okay, so they've got a March of Dimes walk coming up. 